Hello, this is Danny, and I'm going to be going for a very basic test with this humanoid figure. The basic test is, is to be able to work between ZBrush, which is what I'm in right now, and in Modo. And in between all of this is the ACS rig, the Auto Character rig. And I'm going to be using the Auto Character um, kit too, which is fantastic from what I've used so far. And the whole point in this process is to be able to do joint controlled or joint corrections within ZBrush rather than within Modo. Um, and that would be for obvious reasons because ZBrush is more dedicated to sculpting and it's much more quicker with the mouse. It's got more artistic friendly approach to sculpting. So what I want to do here is I want to apply a corrective morph to this. We go to our presets. So one of these. That's the one. And we want a free joint influence. If you go to the list and you go to the weight maps in here, morph maps should I say. You can see there's nothing in there at the moment. And I'm going to grab this, drag it on the joint, drag that on the joint to align it and you'll notice that we've now got a corrective morph map in here ready for me to apply some sculpt into it. So if I was to go into the next stage here, so we've got different stages, toggle the selected joint influence. Um, this is the one to enter the joint influence. So we click on this and it puts us into sculpting mode. And this is where I can apply some sculpting to correct this. Now, this is where I want to change the, the rule of thumb here. Rather than me to sculpt it in here, I want to send this model into ZBrush and, and, and sculpt it. Um, the, the only way I can see we can do this in the ACS kit too is to use this snapshot feature. So if I was to click on this snapshot feature here, it creates a copy of this mesh, which is this mesh here. It's got no rig to it. If I was just to hide the character for the minute, this mesh that you're seeing right here is going to be used for more control. So in essence, I'm going to just, I'm going to, I'm going to call this for morphs just so we've got a different name reference here. This model here is now ready to send into ZBrush. So I'm going to select this model. I'm going to press go Z. You can see it sending it over to ZBrush. And this is where I'm going to correct the things that I don't like about the way that it's this um, deformation has occurred. So The anterior deltoid would be a little bit higher. Trapezius may be a little bit higher in this particular instance. The traps would be so aggressively wide, especially on a female. Okay, so you get the idea. We've applied a correction to there so that the deformation looks better. So I'm going to just go with this just for simplicity. And then I'm going to send this back. This is the one that I've just sent back. And I'll just turn this off for a minute. And this is the character that I want to apply the morph control to. Now, as I mentioned already, if if I was to apply these morph controls, let's just select the character first. We've got the morph map that I'm going to select. Now, this morph map is the, is the map, map that I want to apply the background to morph feature which essentially should be doing exactly the same thing as if I was to do this sculpting but the difference being is, is I want to use the background morph to achieve this so I'm going to turn on the background morph which has got the corrective morph in place that's the only other thing that's in this scene there and I should be able to go um, to vertex map and I'm going to go for the morph tool in this particular case I should be able to apply corrective morphs to this. I'm going to go back into 
the modeling tab where I can see so you've got the amount and this is the morph target this is the target I want it to go to you can clearly see that it's not doing it it's, it's completely ignoring it so that's come out of there the other way I would normally try to do this um, would be going to go to vertex map um, background morph and normally just clicking in this thing would be enough to comply the, the background morph um, but you can see here that it's just not happening for some unknown reason it's just not happening at all um, and the way it should be working is it should be applying this to the morph but it's just not doing it and we'll just turn on morph influence it should be set it's definitely got the right morph control on there just apply 100% it should be doing it very strange um, it's not having no effect on it at all by the looks of it this is the non rigged character same character this is the background morph of what I want it to morph to select the character there I'm just going to do the same thing as what is automatically set up I added the former effectors uh, influences morph influence okay and of course this is all has to be done manually when you're doing this I'm going to create a brand new morph map just going to leave it as morph and in the morph influence same thing as before just going to select that map now this is the difference is that now when I go to a vertex map and go background morph and click just click once in the screen in the scene there you can see it that it has actually conformed to the background morph and it's working fine so just uh Now one of the main obvious differences between a manually applying a morph from background and to the way that ACS is trying to apply a morph is that the morph's been controlled by um, some other constraint. Uh, obviously movement of the joint is going to be controlling that. But um, for some reason it's not allowing me to use uh, my background morph. Effectively it should work uh, unless there's something I'm not understanding. It should work because it's simply just modifying vertex um, positions and it's applying it to the morph map. So the background morph should work but it's not for some reason.